Hyundai recently said it would increase the range of its electric cars by approximately 30% within a couple of years. Now, initially, a lot of people were skeptical. I was probably one of them. But when you see these kinds of little innovations that make pretty big differences, you can see why and how. When all these things add up and come together, actually, I think Hyundai may have been telling the truth. Realistically, this change that increases range by around 5% is a very small change, but it's gonna give massive results. All you need is a few small changes like this, and that 30% could actually become a reality. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you join our Facebook group if you haven't already. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you to our Patreon supporters and also to our YouTube members. As a result of one small change, Hyundai's eGMP EVs will get better range and improved performance. So if you've got the current model, sorry, this is just progress. We're going to see improvements like this probably every year for the next 10 years, 20 years. Like I said, we're going to see 1,000 kilometer or 600 mile range vehicles be commonplace by the end of the decade. And I mean affordable EVs with that kind of range. These sorts of things, this kind of technology, think about it, right? More and more money is being invested into EVs. Every year, the money is literally tripling, quadrupling. This is what happens as a result of that kind of money being invested. When car companies try to out-develop, out-engineer each other, this is the result for customers. A hardware upgrade to a traction inverter is going to enable a range boost of 5% in some of Hyundai's vehicles. Now, the new Hyundai Ioniq 5 has around about 6 or 7% more range due to a slightly bigger battery pack. But just throwing more batteries isn't really the answer. What we need is technological developments like this, like heat pumps. Hyundai Motor Group's EVs based on the Electric Global Modular Platform, or eGMP, will receive a hardware upgrade that will increase the range, performance, and even the charging speeds. Currently, there are four models based on the eGMP, Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Ioniq 6, the Kia EV6, and the Genesis GV60. Hyundai will replace the currently used silicon power module with a third generation silicon carbide unit made by ST Microelectronics, which ensures the greatest power density and energy efficiency resulting in superior vehicle performance, range, and charge time, according to the official press release. So Hyundai haven't really done much here. This is another company developing a product which Hyundai can basically plug in to replace an existing product at basically no extra cost to themselves, which just increases their range significantly. Truthfully, if you look at the current battery pack size of Hyundai's EVs, their range is not really that impressive. I mean, for example, the Tesla Model Y long range or the Tesla Model Y standard range, let's go on that vehicle. That's, that's the most popular Tesla Model Y in the world by far because it's the one that's sold in well, almost every country where Tesla vehicles are sold, except for the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Outside of there, it's sold in every country where Tesla vehicles are sold. So the Model Y standard range has a lithium ion phosphate battery pack and they're meant to be less energy dense but they also have many other benefits so much longer life many more charging cycles they're safer in fire situations you can charge them to 100 percent degrade to zero percent without really seeing any battery capacity loss there's lots of advantages but of course the disadvantage is less energy density you would think, therefore, that the Hyundai Ioniq 5 with a much bigger battery pack, the older model, the 2021 model, had a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, right? Tesla Model Y, a 58 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack, and it's a bigger car. It's about 5% bigger than the Hyundai Ioniq 5. In fact, maybe 10% bigger. It's a fair bit bigger. Surprisingly, they had exactly the same range. Doesn't make sense, does it? The Tesla battery pack is much smaller, should be much less energy dense because of chemistry being used in it. And yet, while it's a bigger car, it's got the same range. Doesn't make sense. So Hyundai clearly has a lot to improve on. And this is one of the ways they're going to do it. The SIC power modules made in Catania, Italy, feature support for charging voltages of up to 1,200 volts direct liquid cooling, and multiple bus bar options for EV manufacturers. And this makes me think of the Cybertruck with its 1,000 volt capacity. 
does this actually mean anything though for fast charging? I mean, clearly Hyundai vehicles and Kia vehicles, EVs, are capable of 350 kilowatt fast charging, but when you actually get them on a fast charger, they almost never charge at that speed. So in reality, this upgrade could increase the range of vehicles by up to 5% in some models and decrease charging times, say Hyundai. According to an interview from 2021 with Hyundai Motor Group's Head of Electrification Development Center, Chai Wu Suk, vehicles based on the eGMP already use an 800 volt silicon carbide power unit for the rear motor inverter, but the front motor inverter uses a 400 volt silicon power module. This means the front motor inverter power module will be upgraded to an SIC based one, which will increase the charging voltage to 800 volts. Subsequently, charging times will be decreased significantly as 800 volt charging is up to three times faster than 400 volt charging according to Choi Woo Suk. Now, obviously that's an enormous exaggeration. He's comparing, uh, you know, a Kia or, or Hyundai vehicle charging an absolute optimum charge point compared to say some sort of EV that's not a Tesla because charging speeds between Tesla vehicles and Hyundai vehicles are relatively similar in the real world. But if you're comparing this possible change, it will actually make their charging speed faster. And that's the key point the charging speed will improve probably by up to 20%. In the same interview from 2021, Hyundai's head of electrification said that the power module, which is a core part responsible for converting electrical energy in the rear motor, got a next-gen power semiconductor with silicon carbide, leading to about a 5% increase in driving range. So doing that with the front motor could potentially increase the range by 5% and charging speeds by up to 20%. In other words, considering that the rear motor already uses an SISC power module, only the all-wheel drive variants of the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, Kia EV6, and the Genesis GV60 will actually benefit from this upgrade. Currently, the all-wheel drive extra long range Ioniq 5 has an EPA estimated range of 266 miles. A 5% increase would add 13.3 miles for a total of 280 miles. Still, I think a lot more work can be done, but this is a very good start. Additionally, Inside EV says that energy efficiency will be better because the vehicle's inverter won't have to convert 400 volt to 800 volt to be stored in the battery. Now, they're saying a conversion from the 400 to 800 volt won't be needed, but actually not entirely true. Now, if you're charging your vehicle at a more common 400 volt charger, then that conversion is still needed and the charging speed wouldn't actually increase at all. So you would need the correct vehicle charger to actually be able to appreciate the gains here in the charging speed to the 800 volt being used on the front and the back motors. Are most chargers capable of 800 volt charging? They're not. Could they be in the future? There'll be more, but still not that many. There's not enough EVs using 800 volt charging for charging companies to really start embracing this technology. Well, not quite yet. Now, this technology has actually been used already in the Kia EV6. What's happening is the Kia EV6 is seeing a range increase from 274 miles to 282 miles. More, in my opinion, is better. So this is definitely a win for consumers. And like I said, it's little innovations and changes and developments in technology like this, which will continue to improve electric cars. Think about Moore's law. That affects computing. And in many ways, an EV is a computer on wheels. We apply Moore's law, and by 2030, electric cars, more than likely, will on average have nearly double the range of today at no extra cost. That's what I'm predicting. I know that sounds optimistic, but I firmly believe it will happen. And yes, while I'm an optimist, I also think I'm a realist. Let me know if you agree or you disagree in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.